Okay, hello again. It is Ryan Gordon. Here we are, part four. We're still at it. Um, I just want to say that the weird thing about doing these videos is that I haven't... I don't prepare these ahead of time. I don't, you know... I mean, I think about it, but I don't try and, like, map them out ahead of time or write it to see if this is the right approach to something. So, uh, so every day I kind of go in this blind, and every time before I hit record, I have this real panic moment. Yeah. Panic moment. I have this real panic moment where I think, oh my god, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm going to do next. And uh, part of everything, I suppose, is just learning to power through that and remember that you probably know more than you think you do, and um, and I say that as a great preface to saying that while I was looking at this last night, after I turned off the recorder, I noticed a bug in this, which just drove me nuts all night, but I did not fix it because I was waiting till the live stream to get to it. So yesterday we put this drop file stuff on here. You know, you could drag and drop a file onto the window and it'll know that that's our new thing that we're playing, and it loads a WAV file, and if it fails it shows a message box. And then, no matter what you do, whether it fails or not, then we try to open the device with this wave spec, which might be bogus. Because this should have stopped right here if this thing failed. That was dumb. Programming's about making dumb mistakes. This is one of them. So we're going to wrap this in an else and just say, okay, all this stuff has to move down. My bad. Uh, we always want to free this, no matter what. There you go. Leave that there, but the rest... Don't open the audio. Don't try and play anything unless the WAV file actually opened. So, okay. We make mistakes, we fix bugs, we move on. Life goes like that. We feel no regret afterwards. Okay. Um, today, I thought we might try to add a volume control to this thing. And the good news is it's not as hard as it looks. The bad news is that we're going to have to change some things to make it work. Um... So we're going to do a little bit of refactoring here before we do anything else. For one thing, it's too late now to be lazy. Can't be lazy anymore. Which is to say, all this beautiful code we just made, and just indented, we have to change it. We can't do just a Q audio that fills the entire, uh, fills the device with the entire WAV file uh, right up at start, because if we're going to be making changes to this audio data as it goes, we can't give it the whole thing, because once it's in there, it's in there. So we're going to have to feed this thing a little bit of audio at a time, so if we need to make changes, we can make them. Um, and furthermore, since we are going to be making changes to it, we do not want to be messing with a thousand little uh, picky little audio formats. Like right now, we're just opening the audio device by whatever the WAV file is set to, but we can't do that anymore because we need to um, uh, make changes to it. And I don't want to have to deal with every single format. Is it floating point? Is it integer? Is it 16-bit? Is it 32-bit? Is it stereo, mono, blah, blah, blah. That it becomes ridiculous after a while, so this has to go. Goodbye. Um, so let's make some changes for that first. Uh, first things first. Let's move this out of drop file. It's kind of ridiculous that all of this is sitting inside the drag and drop stuff. This this is a good candidate for moving to an external function because our main line's getting pretty long now. So let's split this out and let's go from there. All right, so I'm just put a little thing here. You might see me do this from time to time. I noticed I did it in the uh, uh, the in the last part that I just put kind of like SDF SDF kind of thing. Just some random. Just keys on the keyboard to say that no matter what else I do or do not do, this will not compile. So when you see that, you know the compiler will tell you very clearly, hey, you forgot to come back to something you thought was important. So I'm sticking that there to say, we still need to, I'm going to take everything out of this drop file thing, but we still need to deal with it. And that'll remind me to come back to it if I forget to. So, okay. Let me think for a moment here. Let's see. Um... Still need to do that. So let's take all this out. So yeah, now we just have our little blah, blah and frame the thing like we need to. Okay. Now, up here, we're going to create our window. We're going to create our renderer. And let's open the audio device up here unconditionally right at the start. And now we can get back to our if section here. Um, since this won't be open yet, we don't have to close it or free anything yet. 
yeah, let's let's do another one of these little things right here. So we remember to come back to that too. Okay, we're not going to load a wave file right now at all. So put that up in our little come back to me thing. Okay, so good news. This fixed me. We can finally come back to it. Let's see. Let's move this up to the top. Modern C compilers do not care if your variables are defined at the top of the function, but it's sometimes, in some cases, it's nice to have them at the top of the scope anyway, just so you can see very clearly everything you've allocated and declared and stuff like that. So we'll do that for now. Okay, so back to where we started with this thing. We always, 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 for the time being at least, want to have an audio device Get rid of wave spec. That's not going to be a thing here for now. We're going to need this up here once we move on. So let's let's get this. Let's do that too. See, we're just putting things that won't compile all over the source code as we're refactoring, so we can figure out some things that we need to deal with. Because uh, the the things that kill you in programming are copy and paste bugs, where I copied this twice and forgot to update one of them, or I moved things around and I forgot to move a piece of it, or I got really focused on refactoring this piece and left the other piece just hanging there. So it's nice to just trash up the source code while you're doing this. So it knows, uh, so you know, and the compiler will tell you, hey, you left this half done. So that's just good policy. Okay, whoops, come back, where'd you go? Okay. Um, Oh my gosh, I just hit the button again. Stop that. Um, okay, so this was here before, and then we ha we've had this commented out yet forever. Instead of opening the audio device to the exact format of the WAV file we're playing, we're going to open it at reasonable modern things. Floating point audio, playing at 48,000 hertz for a sample rate. Two channels, stereo, uh, for now. We can mess with this more later. Uh, and just a good, fairly reasonably large sample buffer uh, so that you can feed it a, a certain amount of information, wait that long before it needs more audio data for, from you. Um, I think we're still going to try, try to avoid using the callback for now, but probably eventually we're going to get to that. But let's keep it simple and keep using an audio cue to feed this device. Um, Okay, yeah, let's do that. I think that's a good idea. So, okay, so we open the audio device. We say it has to be in this format. Passing a null here, which would normally give you another one of these structures, but with the, with the information of how the audio device actually got opened, SDL will try to open things as close to this as possible, but it might tweak certain things, like mm, the hardware doesn't want to run at this frequency, or uh, it, you asked for one channel, we can only get stereo out of the hardware or something like that. Um, if you say a null here, if you say null here, it's saying it has to be in that format. And if you can't get it from the hardware, I need you to fake it for me inside SDL. So as far as I'm concerned, that is uh, that is what I'm feeding the hardware. Okay, so if audio device fails, this can go back to being a panic and abort because this is happening at startup now. Is that what I called it? Panic and abort. Yeah. Okay. Panic and abort, which just says, oh my gosh, everything's on fire. Quit the program right away. I can go. So we don't have to free stuff if it fails because we're literally panicking and aborting here. And we are not queuing any audio right now because we don't have a wave file at this point. Okay. So that's that. Let's see. Okay, so that's open now. We're still going to use Q Audio to, to do this. So what we're going to do, though, is feed it in little tiny buffers. So we need to put this thing we moved out here back into drop file, because that's still how we're opening files at this point in time. No, 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 let's not do that. Let's make some more globals instead. Static. Let's, uh, we're going to need that too, but let's get these things that were local variables inside our main line. We're splitting this out somewhere else, so we're going to put those things up here as globals, well, file globals, static variables. So we still know the current wave file what it's opened as, and we'll have a function here that returns true or false, uh, open new audio file. 
very descriptive. I tend to do that. It's just write a whole like, you know, like Jack Kerouac across the uh, the function name here. It just goes on forever. Okay, const char file name f name will do. Let's not be too you know long fu long function name short parameters. I don't know. I'm not saying this is a good idea. It's just what I'm doing right now. Okay, so when you open a new so this will just be a function that says set up the thing. We're loading a new file uh, that will be in this file name. So dump whatever is there before. This is the code that was in drop file handling before. Then load the new one. If it fails, show a message box. And no, uh, notably, return a steal false. If you forget what that is, it's just older C's don't have an actual Boolean type, so we have our own. It's harmless. If, you, if you're using a real compiler in a modern time, feel free to use just true and false if you want to, but old Unix heads from the 70s, they still like 1 and 0. You know, just old habits die hard. You know how it is. This just seems like a compromise between the two. So, okay, so this doesn't actually return anything about the file we're loading, except for that stuff's just gonna sit in the global up here for now. This is not permanent. I'll even commit to that. This global state is not permanent. Look at that, I even accidentally hit my caps lock key, so we'll just do that. Quote me, there we go. So, okay, that's there, good, good. Note this is not initialized. Static variables in C are always initialized to zero. That's kind of a magic thing. I don't know if you knew that. Okay, so that resets it, frees it, loads the new one, and we either success or successfully or fails. Okay, good. So now, what I call a thing, open new audio file. Now, because I imagine dropping, dragging and dropping is not the only place we're going to allow people to open files eventually. Drop file, we'll just put that in there. Boom, either works or doesn't, whatever. But now our event handler for this is three lines. Very much clearer for what we're trying to do there. You can see exactly what that thing is meant to do. That also lets us do this thing. I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Open audio device to that. right here before we do anything else. Oh, whoops, that's not it. Open new audio file. I'm going to paste that one more time. Right here, after we've opened the audio device, I'm going to go back to putting. What did I call that thing before? Music.wave. Okay. Come back. Where'd you go? Music. Dot wave. Just so there's something open so that we you know our, our initial STL sample music file is there. So we don't have to drag something onto this every time we want to run it to test it. Okay, good. So So our rewind button and our pause button have to change because we are not going to give this a whole block of audio anymore. So we're going to need to change that real quick. Okay, yep, we can do this. This is no problem. We're going to need one more global here, which is static uint32. Hey, you know you can have a WAV file that's more than four gigabytes, but for now we're going to assume they're not. I think you can. I don't know. There might be a limit in the... Uh, the, the WAV file spec. I mean, it goes back to like the 1980s. Like, they probably weren't thinking about 64-bit uh, you know, file lengths at the time, so I don't know. Wave, we're going to call this WAV position, WAV POS, WAV piece of sh sh something. We'll just, that's going to be our current byte position in the WAV file. Okay. Let's reset that in here, too. WAV position. This is, this is when uh, your computer science classes start complaining that you shouldn't be using global variables. This is one of the reasons they do that is because they start to, you know, multiply over time like bunny rabbits. Uh, you probably and they can become overwhelming really quick. Even though they're just a local file scope, they can't. They're not uh, our file scope. They're not globals you're going to use outside of this file. This can get overwhelming very quickly. And it, if nothing else, eventually you probably want to put this into a struct and just be passing one thing around instead of having 20 million of these. So, um, But for now, we're just going to try and embrace the complexity and just get through it for now. So, okay, so open an audio file, audio file is there, cool. So, okay, here's what we need to do. Once we have an audio file that's here, every time through our main loop, this keep going thing, we need to make sure the audio device isn't waiting for more data. So we have... This big honking thing is our event loop. 
this is our drawing loop, uh, this is our drawing chunk down here, and right between those two, let's deal with audio. And while I'm thinking about it, I mentioned this a moment ago, let's put some, we need a word for this, like, ugh, I don't know, the SDFs, I don't know, the something, I don't know what we're going to call this yet. Just something to stop the compiler from uh, uh, letting us hurt or harm ourselves. I don't know, we need, we need a, if you have a good idea of what we should call that, just, you know, like the... Uh, redesign the refactor protection fairies or something. Give me an idea in the comments if you have a good name for that. Maybe it'll stick. I don't know. Anyway, so put a note up there just so I know to come back because we have to fix that stuff too. But um, okay, so every time through this thing, through this loop, we check for events and we draw the next frame of green and the buttons and then we come back up and we start the loop over again. So between checking events and drawing the thing, we're going to have to make sure if there's more audio to be played that we play it. Let's see. Let's see. There's a magic thing for this. Get cute audio size. There it is. It's been queued for playback with cute audio, but not been sent to the hardware. That's exactly what I want. Thank you very much. Where'd you go? I'm just going to see a little Dragon Ruby code there. You lucky devils. Okay. Um... Okay, cool. So, let me make sure that was bytes, right? Returns number of bytes. I, I, this is always my favorite thing. Uh, everyone has a different way of representing all information in audio. This is an ongoing problem across the entire science of computer audio. But So you see a lot of things where it goes, it returns the number of bytes, not samples, exclamation point, of cute audio. This happens all the time. People are always going bytes versus samples versus sample frames, and sometimes they think samples mean sample frames, and Everyone, we've never really unified on a vocabulary for these things. It's kind of frustrating, but that's just how that went down. So, okay, so SDL get queued audio size is a function that will say, how many bytes have I already given to, the, to SDL to feed to the audio device by calling SDL queue audio? Now, before the answer was when we opened the wave file, we gave it the entire wave file. And then when it was done, it was done. Whereas here, what we're going to do is we're going to give it another chunk of the wave file, but not very much of it, because this loop happens pretty quickly. So we're going to go through here and, well, first off, audio device. That's what this thing is. Device. Audio size is less than, I am just going to use a nonsensical number for now. We're just going to say 8192. Eight kilobytes. If there's less than eight kilobytes in there, then we need to feed it more data. So that's when this magic's going to happen. SDLQ audio. We're saying, oh, it need, it's waiting for more data. Let's give it more, but just a little bit, not too much. Wave buff plus wave position. Remember we put that function, that uh, thing in here? And wave buff is UN8, so this is going to move by byte offsets, which is good. We want that. Okay, so now come back. Where'd you go? There we are. Plus wave position. And we want to give it, I don't know, let's give it, let's give it 32 kilobytes at a time. Why not? Sure. So, you know what I'm about to do here. You know, the whole DRY thing. Don't repeat yourself. I'm going to do that. New bytes. Why not? const uint32 new bytes can't type equals that just so I don't have to type that twice because frankly I pulled this number out of my butt so we're gonna have to wait and see if that was a good idea or if we need to make that bigger or smaller um, this number two but let's not get crazy because we only write it in one place right now so uh, but this I'm gonna write in two places because wave position is about to move ahead by new bytes and also, here's another thing that's going to get us. Let's not steal bytes remaining or this big honking number. Okay. Const uint32 bytes come back. Bytes remaining. I gotta stop saying come back. I don't know why I keep saying that. Bytes remaining equals. So um, we know the wavelength in bytes, and we know where we are in bytes. So wavelength is the bigger of those two numbers. 
hopefully. Steel assert wave position is less than wave length. Why not? Sure. Okay, bytes remaining equals wave length minus wave position. So if we have 10 bytes in the file, and uh, this, this is my rule of tens, if you can, obviously you're gonna have more than 10 bytes in a wave file, but you know, if you, you can always do the math on 10 to make sure you're not overflowing by one. So, and we're at wave position four, 10 minus four would be six, which would mean position four, which means we've eaten four and we're on the fourth one. So we should have one, two, three, four, five, six left. Okay, that's good. You're not overflowing that. Off by one things kill you, kill you dead. So, okay. So that's also gives us a chance to, let's just put that assert there, just, you know. Um, SDL assert is just a regular old assert, except it does some other magical things, which I'm not gonna get into right now, but Talk to me if we trigger it and I'll explain it. Um, okay, so if bytes remaining equals zero, is greater than zero, because we don't want to do anything if we're at the end of the file. So you don't want to queue anything new if we're at the end of the file. Okay, so see how many bytes are left in the wave file that we haven't given to SDL yet? Okay, wait, let's, let's go back even further here. So. If the audio device has less than eight kilobytes available to it, because you don't want to wait for this to get to zero. When it gets to zero, you're already playing silence. So you want to catch it before that point. So if the audio size is getting low, and this number might not actually be low, we have to figure out how. We'll do the math on this later, decide if that's actually low, but we're just trying to get this running right now. So if we're getting low on audio that's available to be played to the device, see how much we have left, make sure the program's not broken, if we still have data to feed to the device, give it up to 32 kilobytes or less if there's not that many available left in the file and feed that amount of data to SDL so that it can keep the audio playing without any silence or skips in it and then update our little upkeep variable that will keep track of how much we've written. Okay, good. So. That'll get us that, and that'll just every once a frame, once the frame through here, it'll see if it needs to feed more to the audio device, and we'll do it. And then it'll draw on, it'll just keep on doing its thing, so that's good. Um, good, good, good. So now, oh yes, our little, uh, our uh, obvious mistake fairies are here protecting us, so. Um, okay, so if you've clicked... Press the rewind button. If you've pressed the rewind button, then let's still clear whatever audio might not have been played yet because that's still a good policy. And then don't even queue anything else at this point. Just set the wave position back to zero. And then when it falls out of this event loop and gets down here, it'll see there's nothing in the device to play. And it'll see that we have plenty of bytes remaining, so it'll start feeding the thing as if you, we rewound, rewound it. So that's good stuff. Okay, so that should fix rewind. And then, I don't know if you can hear the dog barking outside the window. That's my neighbor's dog. She's very sweet. Um, okay, let's see. And then this is the pause button. Just pressed the pause button. I say that in quotes because it's just a rectangle. Although, if you wanna be fair, if you get all the way down to like the Win32 or the X11 level, it's just a rectangle there, too. Okay. Um, so pausing is still correct. That's Okay, that doesn't need to do anything. That's Pausing still works the same way as it does before. Okay, dropping file just starts all our stuff again. Closing the vice. Okay, I think... Yes, okay. And since we added this at the start, it should... We keep... It's paused at the beginning, but we'll have a file loaded right at the start. Okay. I am going to lower the volume because I can already tell you the disaster that's going to happen when we try to build this. Well, I mean, not this disaster. I have to fix this first. Oops. Yeah, this is no longer a drop file. This is now F name. Our compiler error is so helpful. Okay. So let me fix my other mistakes here. I feel bad for the person that, you know, 
22 minutes ago saw me do that and just screamed at this for all this time. I apologize. I apologize. I know it drives you nuts. Uh, okay, so let me just try up. Oh, that's not it. Come back. Okay. Oh, the curse of the wrong number of parentheses. That happens to me all the time. Every time. I just, I just, I just sprinkle them around, you know, just give out parentheses like candy, like I'm writing in Lisp, but I get it wrong a lot. Okay. That's that, and this should probably fix it. Yeah, okay. Let's see here. So I gotta tell you, this might make some really ugly noise. Let's wait and find out. I'm gonna hit the unpause button here, because it starts paused. Yep. Oh, hey, who? I hit my assertion failure. That's good, I get to tell you all about this now. See this big honking window that came up? Um, that's the thing we asked it to test for. Uh, that's where it happened. Like, this works like an assertion, but STL does this neat thing where you can try to do it again. It'll still be wrong. Uh, you can hit break, which will actually trigger, if you're running under a debugger, we're not, so it'll just end the program, but this will actually cause your debugger to break so that you can look at the problem, or you can kill the program directly, or you can ignore this if it's not that big of a deal. Uh, it'll ignore it once. But, of course, we're doing this in a loop, so we're hanging again. Or you can say, always ignore. In which case, nothing's going to happen. But you can see the program is continuing to run. It's a neat little feature of SDL. I'm very proud of that thing. Okay. Um, and being an assertion, if we built with optimizations enabled, that check would go away entirely, and we just suffer from the buggy program. Um, okay, where'd that assertion go? I'm so glad I put that in there, so I got to show that. Wave position is less than that. Oh, that's interesting. How did that happen? If it's less than that, then we're at the wavelength minus the wave position. New bytes. Whatever is less between those two. Wave position plus. Bytes is greater than that. I have no idea what's wrong with that. We'll come back to that. Oh, actually, it's probably just this. <laughs> yeah, eventually the wave position is going to equal the length of the wave. So that's that was quality right there. Sorry about that. Let's just build that again and see if it triggers again. I could be wrong. Could still be wrong. Sometimes it's just, you know, you still get hit. After all that effort to avoid having a... Uh, um, uh, uh, off by one error. I managed to insert one in the assertion check. That's 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 quality. That's why you're watching this because you can. I'm so trustworthy. <laughs> okay. Um, let's hit this. This is still going to sound terrible. But on a brighter note, it didn't seg fault that. It didn't assert that time. So um, you can rewind it and it still sounds terrible. Okay. And the reason for that is because. We are correct, I think, we have to we have to fix this to find out. I think we are correctly feeding this thing the audio. Uh, we are correctly feeding it piece by piece the audio it needs, but the device always, always wants this format, but the WAV file is in whatever format we opened it in. So we need to convert it as we go. And I'm going to show you this, because this is the best way to do a little conversion. Well... No, because we had a chance to have right. Okay, I'm going to show you the correct way to do this. SDL has something called an audio stream. This is relatively new. If you're on a very old version of SDL2, it's not in there. But we used to have this thing called Convert Audio, and it's an atrocious API. We're going to get rid of it in SDL3. Um, audio streams are super nice. It's just this opaque object. You say, I have another global variable. Oh, no. Let me see. What is this? static sdl audio stream stream you don't actually have to initialize static variables to null but i like the explicitness of it so this loads the wave that's cool we'll create our stream right here to match this wave stream equals uh and this is what you give an audio stream in sdl you say the source format which would be whatever format the wave is in which we just happen to know because it's in this wave spec thing um, except I don't remember spec. What do they 
call this thing? Okay, format. Oh, I guess I could have guessed it was called format. Weave spec format. Weave spec channels. Is it freak? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Weave spec freak. You tell it the data that's coming in, what format it's in, and the data you want out of it. And in this case, I'm just going to copy this stuff, but we really should make this some kind of global thing. Where'd you go? There you go. Data in is whatever the wave is. Oops, we're not in freak yet. We want the format that's going out is audio float 32. Two channels, stereo, and 4800 hertz. Yeah. If not stream. Create audio stream, blah, blah, blah. Cool. Um, I guess we got to clean all this stuff up again, too. But... Hey, you know what? It can just fail. Who cares? Mm, yeah, OK, no, OK. Let's do that. Fine. Might as well be good about this. OK, good. Um, OK, so all an audio stream does is you shuffle data into it, and you pull data out the other end of it. It's just a, basically a cue that between what you spit it into it and it spits out will be the format you need it in. And it'll allocate memory as it needs to, and it will um, resample as it needs to, which is nice because it literally works as a stream. So you don't have to say, here's my data. Give me all the data back. You can say, I'm giving you a bunch of data, and you give me stuff back as you need it. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to keep the stream. In fact, we don't even need these to be global anymore. Quote me. Wave buff, all these things, these can go away now because all we need is the stream to be global. Which means we don't need to keep these things around to make sure they're freed afterwards. Which means tiny bits of wave refactoring are about to happen. I know the stream's about to get long, so let's just get this part done and we'll go from there. So, wave buff is null, wave length, wave position. Okay, yeah. Okay, yep, yep, yep. Okay, good. Load the wave into this information, which is just local now. Cool. Wave spec, wave buff. We don't need wave position here. That can go. Goodbye. Don't care about freeing this stuff, because, uh, setting these back to zero, because we just have to free this thing. The rest are all locals now. Um, yep, OK, so the only thing you care about, in fact, we don't even need a bull for this. There you go. Goodbye, global. Oh, it feels so good, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Okay. Open new audio file will always give you an audio stream. Yeah, why not, right? Still audio stream. Stream. Yeah, sure, why not? Okay. So we get the stream. Blah, blah, blah. If it fails, we free our thing, return null, because this is now returning a pointer and not a boolean after all my lecturing about that 30 minutes ago, and then we return the stream. Okay, so now every time you open an audio file, you don't actually get a buffer of memory anymore, you get an SGL audio stream, which will tell you how much data you have back. Oh, we're gonna lose our rewind functionality if we do it this way. See, this is why you should plan ahead before you do tutorial videos like this. Okay, well, we're gonna be cheap for now just because this is running long, so static char pointer file I don't know this feels like a cheap thing to do okay now let's I promised these globals were going away and now they're coming right back it's not fair but that's just how this is going down okay sometimes you just got to do that I'm sorry I think it's amazing we made it four four uh, uh, parts into this thing before I got indecisive on you so sorry about that Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, okay. So, now free wave, wave buff, wave len equals zero. Wave spec, we can't reset right here, so stream. Okay, yeah. Well, this gives us a chance to free this audio stream too, right? Okay. 
Shoot, shoot, shoot. Okay, fine. We'll go back to SDL bull. Fine. Disaster is struck. We'll just do this. SDL true for now. False. Free the wave. Wave len equals zero. Feeling dumb. Feeling dumb. Okay, so that fails. That's cool. I think you can just, you know what? Let's just try it and see if it works. How do you free an audio stream? Where'd you go? There you are. Functions available since SDL 2.07. Okay, good. Um, yeah, okay. So free the audio stream. That's all you have to do. I could have told you that. Okay, stream. In case it's there. See, after a while of doing this and having to talk through the whole thing, you start hallucinating, so. Um, the stream is set to null, the wave wave buff equals null, just in case. Okay, yeah, 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 let's just do that. Okay, so, fine, open new audio file, yeah. So, okay, so we get the new stream, and for now, and this might not be universally true forever, but let's just dump the entire thing to it. I believe it's audio stream put, right? Get the number of converted resample. That's not what I'm looking for. Audio stream get. No, we want audio stream put. That's what we want. Yeah, okay. And make sure this is bytes to number of bytes to write to the stream. Yeah. Okay, so at this point, we need to keep the wave buff around because we need it for rewinding. But dump the entire thing into the stream right away. And we should probably check for error on this. This can have an error if you run out of memory. But honestly, equals negative one, fix me, graceful handling. Panic and abort if this fails, because it's probably out of memory. Your stream put failed. You'll get error. And you know, Really, what are you going to do when you run out of memory, right? I can't think of any other reason that would fail, so we'll just do that, and just life is, is what it is, right? Okay. Just in case, you know, why not? Steal false. Nah, eh, you know, fine. Panic and abort. But we'll fix that later. Okay. Um, so now the, we created an audio stream and dumped the entire WAV file into it, and now, as we need to here, Where'd you go? Okay, so we have this much audio that we fed to the device. Bytes remaining is about to change because now Oh, I guess we should do that too. Audio stream flush. Where'd you go? There you are. Audio stream flush. Um, if you have just one big thing you're converting with the audio stream, you should flush it afterwards. Audio stream flush stream. This can probably also fail, but fix me error handling. Because we're running long here, so. <clears throat> okay, audio stream flush. Just says the whole file, everything I want you to convert in the stream is there. Do it all, because otherwise SDL will hold some of it back in case more data is coming in, which will let it be able to resample more data without there being gaps in the audio which are bad, but <clears throat> that will, since we have the whole file going on, you just give it a flush, so it's like, this is it. Convert the whole thing. We're ready. Don't don't hold back when we ask how many bytes are left, more importantly, so. Uh, come on, audio stream available. There we are. We no longer have to calculate this, because we're not using an index into a, into a buffer anymore. Audio stream available stream is... That returns an int. That's interesting. Okay. I wonder why we did that. Okay. Cool. Um, that's an int. That's fine. Okay. Then you don't need that as surname anymore, although I'm glad I got to show you that. That was enjoyable. By some definitions of enjoyable. Okay, so if there's still data left in the stream, that is to say there is still wave file left to be played in the correct format, 
then give it up to 32 kilobytes and cue that audio, but that audio has got to come from this right here. Okay. Audio stream get. We need to actually get these bytes out of the thing now, so. Again, fix me error checking because we're running late here. But we know this should have enough bytes because we just asked it, so. And also, we're going to be super cheap here and go static. Converted buffer. There's 1024. I don't know if you can do that with a static thing without it complaining. So static u int 8 converted. Okay. Audio stream get converted buffer. Are we all having fun still? It's hard to say. New bytes. This has got to be an int now, too. Okay. So this will just say, pull the next data out of the audio stream, the number of bytes I need, put it into this little static buffer right here, and then feed it to the audio device. And we don't need to keep track of the wave position anymore. In fact, wave position. Is that in here? Yes, it is. We don't need that anymore. Yes, we do need that. Okay, let's get to that in a moment, too. Okay. So, okay, so our loop's working the same, but instead of just feeding it from this buffer of memory, we're going to put it through an audio stream, which will convert it to the format the audio device wants. And we're going to need that for a second. For, we're going to need that in a second for something else, but let me go fix this last thing. Wave position doesn't exist anymore. So when you hit the rewind button, if the device is open, device is always open now. We don't need to check for that anymore. Goodbye. Boom. Oops. Okay. Try that again. Satisfying. Goodbye. Okay. This is not check for because the device is always open if you got this far. Um, clear whatever is waiting to play on the device because we're rewinding. And then we need to dump what's in the audio queue and reload it. Uh, dump what's in the audio stream and reload it. Which is kind of cheap and a, uh, kind of a cheap thing to do, but also a very expensive cheap thing to do. But let's do it anyway. Okay. Yeah, okay, let's do it. So if audio stream put, we don't have to open the wave file again because we already loaded that buffer and it's still sitting in memory. Uh, so clear queued audio. We need to clear the thing too. Where's that? Audio stream clear, there it is. Clear any pending data in the stream without converting it. That's what we want. Dump the audio that's going to the device, dump the audio that's in the stream, so it's reset. Uh, again, we should check this later, but like I said, we're, if we're running late here, so clear it, put the new thing there, and flush it also. Where did that thing go? Okay, so now, and when you flush that, it'll make sure the whole thing's available to convert, regardless of what it is, so this should play I don't see if it works. I don't know. What's, what could possibly go wrong? That should be an SDL false. Sorry about that. That worked that time. All right, let's see if it works. All right. Back in business. Um. those Kevin Hartnell files at. Let's see. Let's try. Or should I know what podcast theme is? Let's find out. Where did my window go? SDLM. Okay. That is very podcast theme -y. All right. And pause still works. Rewind still works. Okay. Okay, so we're back in business, even though I bet, what is this thing? This one is playing as, I think, 16-bit integer audio at uh, 
stereo and at 44.1K. However, this one is playing at a different sample rate with different channels, and it's also compressed audio, but it's probably 16-bit audio too. Um, but because, where'd you go? Oh, come on, man, where'd you go? Because we took all this effort to put this audio stream in, both of them can play, but we don't have to open the audio device every time. And more importantly, we can now feed the thing little tiny chunks of audio instead of the whole thing at once. Um, which is good if you were to put like a multi-gigabyte wave file on here or something like that. Um, or more importantly, if we get this far, you know, uh, you know, streaming audio over the network where you don't know the whole size, you don't have the whole thing available to you at once, you can still play that thing back. And it this is now taking care of all those audio formats and blotty, blotty, blotty. That's good news. Um, I cannot believe we did not get to the actual reason we did this today, but we're at 45 minutes. It's time to call it quits for the day, y'all. Um, but what we want to do with this is add a volume control, which we're, I promise you, we're going to do next time. And having a volume control requires us to be able to feed the audio device a little at a time so we can make changes to that audio before we feed it to SDL um, on the fly, which is kind of fun. Um, I promise we'll do it next time. I think this is more than enough for today. Um, I understand this was not the most exciting day of this. Um, Tomorrow is going to be more fun, I promise. But, you know, sometimes you have to eat your vegetables, and today... We ate all the asparagus, so I think that'll do for now. All right, I will see you next time if you haven't given up on me after this. And <laughs> um, thanks for watching, if you're still here. I love you all, both of you.